So welcome back to Crazy Cool Crochet. And as you can see, I've got a bit of a hodgepodge of a mixture of yarns here. And what is happening is, as I am videotaping, it is um, late April 2020. And we are in the midst of a horrific pandemic. And my daughter is a nurse at a large hospital. She's got five kids at home. So when the stay at home mandate came out, and actually long before that, I took stay at home very, very seriously. So um, what this means to me is I do not leave my house except for groceries and that's only every few weeks and that is only when it is really truly necessary. I make do. I do not leave my house. Um, that's my way of doing everything I can to keep myself, my family, um, neighbors, anybody who's out and about as safe as humanly possible. So uh, what this means to my crochet business is I have not um, been out to purchase supplies probably since February. And this means I am putting out few and, and far between tutorials, patterns, designs. It's been about a month since the last one. And I decided, well, I have got to do something. Um, I am not one that hoards yarn, <laughs> or uh, to put it another way, um, I only purchase yarn as needed. I don't buy yarn in advance and then try to work in a pattern around the yarn. That makes no sense to me. So I come up with a design first, and then I determine how much yarn I need, what kind, and I go out and search for it. Uh, since I'm not doing that, I decided to look at the stash of my leftovers, and this is what I came up with. So I've got a combination of Super Saver, and I love this yarn. It is all uh, number four worsted weight, and this is the design I came up with. I think it's really pretty cool. Now, the only weird situation here is if you can see the two whites that I've got here. The back panel is going to be a different shade of white simply because I didn't have enough of the creamier white. So when you are doing this, you know, please feel free to do whatever you need to do to make it work. Um, of course, it's better to have the same shade of white for the back panel as for the front, but I'm making do. We are going to start the first front panel with the gray and a chain of 36. And then we will be working the entire pattern in half double crochets. If you need instruction on how to do the chain, how to make a half double crochet, I will leave um, a little white box up above where you can click and go to the beginning tutorials. Now this pattern will fit a pillow 18 by 18 inches. And that's a very standard size uh, decorative pillow. It will be very, very easy to change this to different sizes. I will leave all of that information in the white space, the description area below. So just open that up and you'll find more detail. I am using an H hook of five millimeter. So what we will do here is yarn over for a half double start in the second chain from the hook. There's the first and there's the second. 
Okay, you've got three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all three, and that's a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, pull the yarn through, pull through all three loops. And by the way, this will be a very, very easy pattern. So it will be crochet beginner friendly. So now you will just continue with the half doubles all the way across. And you will end up with 35 half doubles. Okay, we are at the end of that first row. And I'm about to enter the last half double crochet into the last chain. That will make 35. Chain 2. Turn. And we will continue in the half doubles, starting with the first space. Now take care that you are entering the hook under the two strands that form a chain at the top. You're entering into there. Do not enter in the spaces in between below by entering under the two strand chain, it will give you a tighter, cleaner look. So just continue all the way across. All right, we're coming up to the end of the second row. And this is number 34. And number 35 is way over here. There's that two strand chain. That will be your last one. So just make sure you're counting across and then you'll ensure that you don't miss that last one. And then chain two, turn and repeat. So you will repeat this for about nine inches. And then we will change color. But I will be back to show you how to do that. Okay, we've completed the nine inches of the gray and it worked out to be 23 rows now we're going to attach the red color so we will start the last half double three loops on the hook with the gray now we bring in the red to complete that half double And then we do the two chains and turn. Now at this point we can cut off the gray, leave a tail, and now we just continue in the pattern exactly as we have been for another nine inches. 23 rows. You can see how pretty that's looking already. Now don't forget to head over to crazycoolcrochet.com for the written pattern and I will put this also on Etsy where you can get a printable pattern. And don't forget to open up the detail in the white space below in the description area. And what I really want to make sure that everyone is aware of. Now, because I am not able to put out weekly patterns, tutorials, what I have been working on. For those of you not aware, this channel and my blog, crazycoolcrochet.com, have a two-fold focus. So one is the patterns, the tutorials, 
And then my main focus, however, is helping crocheters create real income from their crochet, real income. And in many cases, full-time income. So what I have been working on along those lines is a brand new course that will teach crocheters how to do that. And of course, a whole lot more detail about that will be coming. But in the meantime, while I'm still working on that course, do look at the videos that I've created on this channel where I go into a lot more detail about how to earn full-time income from your crochet. And to get to those videos, look for the name of this channel, Crazy Cool Crochet, below the video in the white space. Click on that. It will open up to my home page. And on that, you will scroll down just a little bit and you will see those videos. Now, for those of you not interested in that, head for that same home page and you'll see a lot more videos there, but there's still more videos than what is on that home page. If you go up on that page and click where it says videos, that will open up with even more. So in the meantime, since I'm not able to put out weekly or so tutorials and new designs until things settle down some more, then please go ahead and check all that out. And over at the blog, again, crazycoolcrochet.com, you will also find a lot, lot, lot more detail, much more detail than what you'll see on the videos regarding creating that full-time income. There's a lot of information over there. So let's keep going with this. Okay, we have finished the gray and the red. And keep in mind, keep in mind that the red is not a Crayola red. It's more of a cranberry or a burgundy that will look much nicer than a real red red. Okay, so now to end that last row, you do your last half double crochet and do one chain, two chains, cut off the yarn, which I've already done, pull it through and then squeeze it down that forms a nice tight knot. Okay, now we are going to turn this over. You've ended on a wrong side. Now let me show you how you know you're on the wrong side. Turn this over. And generally speaking, where you've started your foundation row, which is down here, and there's the tail where you started. That's on the left side. That's generally the front or the right side. Okay, so now we're on the right side. And we are going to turn this on its side. Now we are going to attach the gray in the bottom corner, right side facing you. Pull the yarn through chain one. Now we're going to do a row of single crochets. So enter the first one in the same space and then continue across entering a single crochet in each space as evenly spaced as possible. Don't leave too much of a gap between your single crochets. So don't skip way over here. And 
leave a tail, keep the tail along the edge so that you can be incorporating it into the single crochets and hiding it. All right, so you are just going to single crochet across. And this is just going to provide a little border, a base for the gold that we will be returning to the half double crochets for. Okay, now keep going until you get to the red and then we're going to switch over to the red so that that matches over here. All right, we've met up with the red row, or the red line. Do that last gray. Leave your two loops on the hook. Drop the gray. Pick up the red. Leave a tail. And now finish that single crochet with the red. And then continue the single crochets with the red. And again, keeping the tail flush with the row so that you can be incorporating it into the single crochets. So just single crochet all the way across till you get to the end. And then we'll cut off the yarn. And of course you can cut off the gray at this point. Leave a tail again. When you get to the end of this row, go ahead and tie off and cut off the red. Then we'll start with the gold. Now let's attach the gold in the corner again. Right side is still facing you. Do two chains and then a half double in the same exact space. And then we're going to do half doubles in each space across. And by using that single crochet of gray, it gives you a nice finish when you add the gold. I actually did this initially starting the first row with the gold, which would have been a lot easier and faster, but it turned out horrible. So I will try to leave a photo just to, just to show you the huge difference it made by frogging that, rip, ripping it out, and then using the single crochet border instead. All right, so go all the way across. When you get to the end, chain two, turn, and do one more row of the gold half double crochet and then we're going to switch to the white and finish it off with white half double crochets. This is going to be pretty cool going horizontally with the gray and the red and then vertically with the gold and the white. Okay, for the fringe, we are going to use the gray. And I like to use something the size of a little packet of gum. And all you need to do is wind the yarn around the packet of gum several times. 
You may have seen me do this a few times already on my other videos. Cut it on the bottom. Cut it across the bottom. And then you will use for this project two strands. Fold it in half. Take the hook, sorry about that. Okay, insert the hook on the top of the last gray row, so in between the two red. Grab the two strands of yarn, pull it through. Pull up the loop, this project. Okay, pull it through, tug gently. When you tug, it creates a net at the top. So tug it up, and then do that in every other space. And then when you're done, trim the bottom so that they're nice and even. And you want this to be about, I would say, an inch and a half long when you trim it, or whatever is your preference. All right, for the back panel, I did a chain of 64, and now we're going to do the entire panel of half doubles, starting in the second chain from the hook. So just like we did with the gray when we started. I'm going to do a half double in each chain all the way to the end. You should have 63 half doubles. When you get to the end, chain two, turn, start your next row of half doubles in the second, or in the first space, I should say, exactly like you did when you started. And you will complete a panel 18 inches long and 18 inches high. So keep going, then we'll put the panels together. Now that the fringe is done, we are going to attach the panels and we want right sides touching each other. So this is the right side, this is the right side, and we're working on the wrong side. So we're going to take a tapestry needle with a length of yarn, Insert it in the corner of both panels. Bring it through, and we are going to use a simple whip stitch. Now, I like to tie to secure it with a knot. Insert under two strands on the one side, two strands on the other side. Bring it through. Flip it around like that. And then just keep going evenly around. Okay, those tails get in the way. All right, once we get past this section, it becomes a lot easier. There's nothing getting in your way there. There you go. Just keep going all the way around until we are going to do three sides. So only sew around the one side, the bottom, the other side. Leave the top open so we can insert the pillow. And there it is. My second color black pillow with fringe and made entirely of leftover yarn.